Hi, this is David Odell with Odell Complete Concrete. And this is our first day at this particular job site. What we have here is a uh, new garage going in from the ground up. Um, we have the pad and that was already graded prior to me arriving. And I'm hoping that it was graded properly because uh, I don't want to have to do a lot of extra uh, pad work. I just want to dig my footing, set my forms and, you know, go from there on out. So we're going to see what, what happens once we start putting some level lines up, some elevations, and then we're going to go from there. But here's your uh, look at your drawing. This is uh, your basic garage. Um, it's a 24 by 24 feet 6 inches. We're building a garage here. This is the foundation. This actual dirt area has been over excavated, recompacted, so it's over 95% uh, uh, of its optimal compaction right now. Um, so we've got all of our square lines you can see here. We put this up at 24 foot and then we squared the corners with the 6, 8, 10 method. And then we also um, measure diagonally from one corner to the other to verify that everything was square. So we've got that. So these stakes are offset about five feet from the corners. That way we can leave them there and run, around, run the equipment in here to um, start excavating. I got a uh, little uh, tool here that we're gonna be using. Got this from Baker Tool Equipment Rental. As you can see on the sign there, Baker Rentals brand new equipment this is the first day this thing's gonna get used I'm gonna be breaking it in today these footings here on all these corners are 30 inch wide that's for your shear walls and this is on either end of your opening this is a drive drive through garage so there'll be an opening the garage door there and here just for ventilation purposes really you won't have to run AC or anything you get a nice breeze because we're real close to the ocean here and that's the idea of having both ends open on this situation so we got two foot wide footing through the middle you can see this line is this line is building edge this is your footing width right here six inches is your stem wall and then your slab this is going to be designed and set up for a monolithic pour. In other words, we're pouring the footing the slab all in one shot. It's getting uh, four number fives all the way around it, two top and bottom. And then we've got verticals that continue across the slab at, I believe it's 18 inch centers on the uh, number fours. So it's going to be uh, pretty beefy. Uh, anyway, we're going to get to it. I'm going to start digging, moving dirt. Here I am in the uh, excavator. I've got a two foot bucket on here. These particular plans were kind of drawn out as a, a two pour system, meaning they want to do the uh, footings, you know, below grade as this one pour and then come back, you know, and rebar dowel into the footing for the slab. So the way I'm going to do it is going to be a little different than the plan suggests. I'm just going to do everything in one, one monolithic pour. Um, that way I've got the pump truck out here. I, want, here. I got the pump truck here once. I got the finishers here once. Everything happens at once instead of uh, multi-stages, multi-inspections and stuff like that. We're just going to do it in one shot. So what we have here, since we're bringing the elevation up in this backyard, all the dirt is staying on the job site. And I don't have a skid steer to move this dirt that I'm digging. So what I'm doing, um, instead of piling it up and then pushing it, I'm just dumping it right into a wheelbarrow. And then I'm wheeling it about 100 feet away and dumping and making a pile over there. Once this garage floor is in place and it's built, then we'll move the dirt around and slope everything away from the uh, foundation or garage, garage slab. And then we'll pour the uh, driveway after that. This is about three hours later. 
We've got the whole perimeter dug out, as you can see. Two feet deep, two foot wide. And there's all the dirt that was generated. All right. So we're gonna uh, wet down the footing today. Tomorrow, this will be nice and saturated. And then we're gonna run the uh, compactor in the footing. And then we'll be ready to start setting forms. And what we're gonna do is a complete monolithic pour. So we're gonna do a uh, you know, floating stem wall, gravel, six mil visqueen. And we're gonna pour the whole package in one, one time. This is a little freestanding wall. There's gonna be a door right here passenger door into the garage right here and so this will be like a little overhang over the entry of the garage basically well so day two and that's going to be tomorrow this is day one so now this is uh day two and we're compacting uh the bottom of this footing and what we're going to have is an uh, inspector soils engineer come out here and check the uh, dirt to see if uh, it's hard enough to pour concrete on. The way I cut this through with the excavator is, is it, it was pretty uh, undisturbed. So whatever it is, it is. So it should be pretty hard. This is just a little bit of very bit maybe a couple inches of loose dirt on top that I just compacted in so now what I did, did here is I've uh, driven all of my uh, steel stakes these are uh, four foot steel stakes the reason they're so tall is because we have a, a stem wall we've got we're nine inches above the natural grade for the slab height plus another six inches for your stem wall and so that puts us well above the top and then we're two inches below grade two feet below grade so we needed four foot stakes to get everything up and out of the ground so we could uh, actually tie wire the top together to hold the weight inside that stem wall as you'll, as you'll see in a few minutes here so we've got all the stakes uh, driven in an uh, inch and a half back to allow for the uh, forms I'm going to be setting I just use uh, 2 by 12 and 2 by 8 stacked around the outside perimeter and on the inside all it is is a two by six that's been ripped to allow for slope on the floor since it's a monolithic pour so right now I'm double checking uh, the string line to make sure that we're still uh, perfectly square On the corners of each one of these corners, actually the footing gets a little bit wider. It gets up to 30 inches wide for about six feet in on each corner. And the reason for that is because that's the shear, shear walls on, on the corners and they have to be a minimal of four feet. So with the footing um, going outside of each shear wall, it's approximately uh, six feet by 30 inches by two feet below grade and then on the rebar on this particular design it's got uh, six number five or, or you could say five eighths rebar and that's two at the top two in the middle and two at the bottom all running horizontally then as far as your vertical bars go we have half inch with uh, six inch tails every two foot on center and those tie into the slab steel which is on 18 inch centers and that's number four steel then we have a four inch gravel base and then we have visqueen six mil underneath that that's the basic design of this foundation so here we have your 2x12, your 2x8 stacked, your outside perimeter wall already set up. I've got about 3 foot spacing on these 4 foot steel stakes. Of course I'm going to have a kicker 
at every one of those uprights which is a kicker is your basic 45 degree angle stake then it goes back to the dirt so the weight of the concrete doesn't push it out there's a lot of weight on this and you want to overbuild in these situations because once the concrete starts going in uh it's too late to move it if it starts to blow out so it's better to overbuild over frame stuff like this the only way you can push it back is if you have a tractor to push the form back if it blows out or you have to dig the concrete out push it back and then put the concrete back in it's about the only two ways that i know to move move stuff around so here's your returns your return stem walls as you can see here on the outside form there's a garage door opening on both sides it's kind of a drive-through but the other ends a dead end you can see that property line block wall back there so basically this is just gonna really work as a ventilation or a breezeway through the garage which is kind of nice especially in this area because you're gonna get an, a nice ocean breeze through here so you won't have to worry about heating or cooling that 2 by 12 height there is a slab height the way this garage is sloped is it's 24 foot so at 12 feet they have a high point in this garage and it slopes both directions it slopes out from half of it slopes out of one garage door the other half slopes out of the other garage door and it has three inches of slope and 12 feet so it's pretty much maxed out with the slopage so I mean you could do a lot of stuff in this garage and you could hose it out really easily where it goes after that's another story but they're most likely going to go into some drains and what have you depending on what they're washing out I don't know so I um, got this 2 by 12 in cross here and I said well you know the concrete's going to probably blow out the bottom and up mushroom up on the outside so i'm going to i threw a two by four underneath this two by twelve just to retain some of that excess concrete from blowing out and then also if i get a form locked in i'll, I'll only i'm only going to lose a two by four instead of a two by twelve so it's good if you can throw some scrap at the bottom that uh it's not a biggie if you end up losing it Here's these little tails that stick out beyond the actual corner of the building. And that's basically for sheer strength. It might have some design element to it as well, but well, I'm not real sure. So we, it's a six inch, they're going to use six inch lumber on this wall. So we've got a six inch wide uh, plate at the bottom. So i got a six inch um, width on the stem wall. I'm nailing some, just some basic uh, stakes on the top just to hold my uh, gap just right at six inches. That'll also hold the concrete when it goes in from blowing apart. driving some 16 duplexes in in these corners here some areas I may use some screws just depends um, on the overlap and the condition of the lumber like if I've got a good overlap I can use 16 duplex and not worry about splitting the wood if I'm cutting my stuff flush the good chance it's gonna split when I try to drive a 16 so then a 16 is kind of worthless so in some situations I'll go with screws and I think I run into that in a couple areas here. Now I'm building this little freestanding form out of the actual location where it's going to end up inevitably going. So basically I got, you know, like I said, we've got a two by six plate, which is really five and a half inches. So what I did here on this freestander that I'm kind of forming out of out of the hole, I just grabbed some two by sixes, stood those upright, and slammed some wood on the side of that, and that gave me the width, and it gave me the ends 
all in one shot. Now I cut off the extra 2x6 length and now I'm going to suspend it over the footing hole like so. Now we're just going to suspend this in the air and drive a few. I like to use eight duplexes on any of this kind of form work. So there's going to be a lot of uh, people walking through here getting uh, plumbing, getting gravel in here, getting pump hoses, stepping over the footings. And a lot of time when you step over footings, you end up stepping on the form. And six duplexes won't hold. So you got to use eights minimal to support weight of people and other objects going in and out of the hole. So this is my inside form. You can see I've already ripped it, so it's tapered. This is where that board ends is the high point, and that's at two inches, and then the other end of this board I left at full height, which is because uh, it was a two by six that I ripped. So I got two on one side, and then the balance on the right, two and a half in the middle, and then three, five and a half at the other end. So that gives me the three inch slope. Also, this is a, a good guide that I can rod the slab. I can rod the, rod, uh, the slab to this bottom of this board. That'll give me slab, slab height. And then um, top of that board will give me top of stem wall, which is still level. There's your returns on the other side, the other garage door opening. Now, if you notice, these uprights are four foot, um, and I put them across from each other. That way, I can wrap tire wire around the two steel stakes, and then they work as one when the concrete weight hits it. Then you're doubling the strength of your uh, uprights by doing that. Now we're dropping some number fives in here. I'm just gonna suspend them from the top. See these stakes, wood stakes I have going across, these cleats? That's gonna hold my whole rebar up in the air off the dirt. So we've got six number fives. Two at the bottom, two in the middle, and two at the top. Three inches up from the dirt, about an inch and a half, two inches down from the top, and then wherever the middle is. It's my other set of two. Not a lot of space when you're looking at two number fives and a number four vertically through a six inch stem wall. I mean, there's really not much room for error if you want to keep uh, the maximum amount of concrete around each side of the rebar when you're pouring in this scenario. Here's what it kind of looks like when it's getting hung and then what you need to do is at least a two foot overlap with 5 8 rebar. And you can um, get down to 18 inch on number three or two foot on number four. So in this case where I had no um, stem wall to hang the rebar for I just threw some three foot wood stakes from the dirt to top of form and I'm hanging the steel off of that. Now at these door openings, uh, we're discontinuing one of the sets of number five rebar since the top two are in the stem wall and there is no stem wall across the doorways. So they terminate in the um, ends, at the ends of the stem wall door opening. So all this grade in the middle, that, that dirt on the inside, should be, uh, we got a five inch slab thickness and it calls for uh, three inches of gravel. So it should be eight to nine inches you know, from that dirt to the top of form right there.
This is just a single story garage. And here's what it looks like the day before inspection. We got some dobies at the bottom because like I said on these corners there's a little bit of extra steel where the corners get wider. So we had to throw some dobies in to support that extra load. I've already oiled all these forms and what you have to do you have to oil the forms before you put the steel in in this in these situations when you're dealing with inspections because if you get oil on the rebar um, they don't like that too much so uh, even though it acts as a rust preventative um, it doesn't adhere as well to the concrete so try to keep the oil off the rebar whenever possible For right now I've kind of got my kickers, my 45 degree angle stakes every other upright and that's not going to be enough so I have to add a few more here and there. But I think I ran out, ran out of stakes to, at this point. We got it formed up, the skeleton form up, now we just got to beef it up a little bit here and there. We're starting to bring in the gravel here, it's just clean uh, gravel. What I'm doing here is I'm adding, see, norm, we have to have the 6 mil visqueen, but I just took some rough spots out of the natural grade with the gravel, so when I laid my plastic down, I'd have a nice flat surface. Now I can start throwing the gravel on top of this uh, 6 mil. I like to let it overlap along the edges, and let it hang down a little bit into the footing. That way it's real obvious that it's there when you do get inspection. Now all I have to do here is just pull a string line across underneath the uh, stem wall form and that gives me the grade. And we're going to we're going to be shooting for a 5 inch thick slab. So I'll just kind of freehand this and measure down from my line and make sure I'm at 5 inches of concrete. And this particular concrete design for this footing calls for a 4500 psi. So since we're using the small rock, because we need to pump it from the front of the house, the opening to get between that property line wood fence that you see there and that house, it's only like nine feet wide. Plus then you got the eave hangover. So you can't get a truck back here basically without taking that fence down. Um, so we're using 3 8 P gravel and it's 4,500 PSI. So we're running about a nine sack cement in here to get that PSI that's calling for. When you do these uh, monolithic, you're going to use a little bit more concrete than you would if you did a two-pour system. Uh, but it, you're going to probably do it in about, I don't know, you probably save about three days of work on a job like this.
once the concrete starts going into the footings which what we'll do is we'll just we got we got uh three trucks going in here three full truck loads it's gonna be 30 yards plus just for this garage slab and foundation these right here these number four rebars that are being bent right now are your verticals that are going to tie the uh, slab steel into the foundation steel and those are going to go every two feet the long part of these uh, tails on this two foot is uh, going to go out to the slab that little short um, leg at the bottom of the six inch is going to be at the bottom of the footing and I'm going to shoot them right down the middle of my number fives and that's also where the uh, J bolts that tie the uh, plate wood plate to the foundation they'll also go right through the middle of the two number fives at top so here's your rebar 18 inch centers number four and a five inch slab 4500 psi three inch gravel base six mil visqueen six number five horizontals all the way around and then you got number fours two foot on center vertically and then every corner has an additional number three for uh, no num additional number five for six foot long then also has a uh, number fours going across the four number fives at the bottom of these footings in each corner And what we have to do here is we're going to have to start hanging the hardware. All the J-bolts have to be in place uh, prior to inspection. All the hold down hardware. Well, here's the, here's the verticals that we'll be dropping in. These uh, verticals will also help support the slab steel from sagging since there's really not much under it at these edges since we rolled the gravel off. as we start to pour um, when we go around this thing with three three truckloads we'll start cutting a lot of the wire that's suspending all this stuff and it'll it'll hold itself as soon as the concrete starts going around it that's what it looks like when you uh, follow the plan These verticals that you're looking at were really designed for a two pour process, but I threw them in anyway, even though I'm doing them one at one pour system. Those actually verticals were designed to hold the footing to the slab in a two pour scenario, but uh, now it's a one pour, but we still got the verticals there. So this is a lot stronger than the original design. But you don't want to have to ever tear this slab out though because it's all part of the foundation at this point. Better, you're better off resurfacing if you want to go with a new look on the floor surface at this point. Like say an epoxy coating or whatever. There's a lot of coatings that are really good for indoor use. There's not many that are good for outdoor use but a lot of good ones for indoor. Now I've got my screed pin set up. Basically I've got a high point in the middle because it slopes, slab slopes both directions out both uh, big doors. Here's all your bolts. What we have is three quarter inch, 12 inch long L or J bolts. And then we also, those are our four foot centers. And then we've got some other hardware that's uh, some HDs. Those happen to be a 5 8 diameter um, that actually go through the corner posts on these door openings. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching my video. And uh, if you ever want to build a garage for it, it's not going to move in any conditions. This is the one you'd want to use.
Don't forget to watch part two of this, which will be the actual pouring of the concrete into the foundation and slab all, all at one time.